What's going on YouTube? This is Ipsec, and I want to talk a little bit about password reset vulnerability, specifically the host header injection, because this is one of the easier ones to test for. All the website needs is a forgot password functionality. Sometimes you don't even need access to the email you're resetting, but if you do, it's super easy to test for. Now, this isn't one of the most common ones because a lot of web technologies would just protect you by default, such as Cloudflare, because it's a reverse web proxy, and they really depend on the host header in order for that proxy to work. Now, a lot of websites that use Cloudflare are, in my opinion, misconfigured in the sense that they'll allow anyone to access it if you know the IP address. If you have a website behind Cloudflare, you really should have some type of firewall that only allows trusted IP addresses or Cloudflare in order to access it. But if you don't and the attacker figures out where your web server is and they can make requests directly, you may be vulnerable to this without even knowing it. So that being said, let's just jump in and show what a password reset looks like. And for this, I am using the Hack the Box Machine extension because it had a web app that was vulnerable to it. And additionally, it has a round cube instance, which is a webmail, so we can really show it off. Um, it says in password reset has been sent. So let's refresh and we can see what this notification looks like. And it has this button here. If I look at the bottom left, I can see it says snippet.htb reset password. And this is how password reset functionality works, right? It gives you a URL that has a unique snippet in here. And as long as you know this secret, you can change the password to an account. Now, the vulnerability comes into play when the website is depending on the host header to generate this link and doesn't have any type of whitelist or anything preventing it, right? So let's test for it. I'm going to go back to Burp Suite. Intercept is on. We reset this and now go to Burp Suite and just edit the host to be 10.10.14.8, which is my IP address. And I am listening here, right? So I'm going to forward the request and then we go back to Roundcube, refresh, and we can see a new request. If I look at the bottom left, we see 10.10.14.8. So nothing is here. I'm going to click the link and suddenly we sent our attacker the unique token to reset our password, which means they can now log into our account, right? So if I just go here, uh, I need to go um, snippet.htb and they type the password and change it, right? And this is incredibly scary when mail filters start auto-following links because I know I get a lot of just fake password resets to my email. Maybe ipsec.rock, someone tries to reset my password. I see it, I say, you know what? I'm not gonna click that link because I didn't make this request, right? Well, if there's a mail filter clicking links for you, um, you may have sent the attacker your secret without even knowing it, right? And to show this, I wanna do a free thing like webhook.site However, this um, doesn't give me a subdomain. It uses a unique page, which kind of breaks password reset things, so that doesn't work. I also wanted to show like request catcher, but for some reason, Azure never really followed this link and it never worked. So I'm gonna do it the same way I showed in my forgot video, which is using Burp Suite Collaborator. It is paid, but you know what? You're doing a web pen test, chances are you have access to this tool. So I'm gonna copy the collaborator thing to my clipboard and I'm gonna open up an email and I have just made this email go to um, an email. It is behind Office 365 and has the like ATP configured to um, watch over links to make sure I don't get fished, right? So I'm going to send this email off and then we're going to wait probably 30 to 45 seconds and we're gonna start seeing requests come to Burp Suite Collaborator. It's gonna start off with some emails and then we'll see the actual bot try to hit our website. And it does this in order to try to identify phishing websites, but because it also sends um, parameters and things like that, um, it can send the attacker your token, right? So anytime you get a password reset request, definitely look at the link to make sure it's not going somewhere else. Um, so still waiting for it. Uh, maybe there's gonna be the curse of the demo gods where it doesn't come, but nope, here we go. So we have this request, it is HTTP. If I look at it, we can see it is sending the whole thing here. And you may say, well, how do I know that's anti-spam, right? Let's just go to MaxMind real quick or something to look at what this request looks like. So if I go to 50.115, 
0.116.131. And we look at this, we see um, it's some cloud thing, uk2.net. I don't know what that is. Um, but obviously, it scanned my email. It's probably just some Microsoft uh, service. I think 52.161 is Azure. Uh, let's see, 52.161.105.39. And we see, yes, this is indeed Azure making the DNS request. It's really sad that I just see that something. I'm like, oh, nope, that's definitely going to be Azure. Uh, we can see other things hit it. This is trying to hit the fave icon. Oddly enough, it's using a different IP address. Is this also UK2? Let's type that in, 40.94.27.3. We submit it, and that is Azure as well making that request. So that is the scary thing of the automated thing. Um, automatically clicking the links. So now let's get into how this vulnerability occurs, right? And what better way than to use the 21st century version of Stack Overflow and just ask the AI um, how to do this, right? So in Flask, how can I get the domain of my web server to use with a password reset link? So we're going to ask the AI, and it's going to spit out a bunch of things. So we're just going to wait for this to finish. And it's saying, use the request object in host, right? So this is going to um, be vulnerable because it's pulling that object out. So we're going to copy this code that it gives us, run it, and then we're going to ask it how to um, harden it. And this is doing quite a bit more than I expected it to, honestly. So... Let's just copy this code and make sure we can get it working on our box. So V, we'll call it app.py, paste it in. And let's see, uh, reset password. Okay, we just need this reset link, right? So it's getting the domain here, reset token, email. I think this is fine. We don't actually have email working, so we'll comment that out and then say, um, let's see, an F string here and put reset link. Okay, this should be good. Um, app is flask and I did not see an app.run at the bottom. So let's do app.run, Python 3, app.py. It's running on localhost 8000, so let's go send a browser to it. Um, 127.001, I may have said 8,000 out of a habit, but it's 5,000, right? And I wanna say it was reset dash password, not found. What was the URL? Um, reset underscore password. So reset underscore password, and we see it's using 127.001 port 5,000. Again, that is going to be, whoops, meant to do that the host header. So let's go burp suite on, refresh, and we're going to send this to totally not a malicious website.com, right? And we're going to send it, and we see the host header is here, right? So this code that the AI gave is vulnerable. So let me Ask the AI, how do we protect against this? And we'll judge its response, right? Um, how can I protect against host header injection? So the first thing you really wanna do is like use Cloudflare or reverse web proxy, but defense in depth, right? You can't just protect um, one approach. And the AI is getting it here. Um, use a whitelist approach, right? In the actual host header, you should be, um, or not host header, but the password reset thing before it sends an email, it should have a whitelist to make sure the domain is correct, right? Um, alternatively, you could also use like an environment variable to store the website. So generally that's where you store like all your secrets. So you're not getting the domain at all from the request, you get it from the environment variable that is on the web server, right? But generally, um, since OpenAI said use a whitelist to check domain, this is what we do, right? Um, if domain does not equal 127.001 port 5000, and then return access denied. 
So let's try this. Um, we do reset password. Oh, I'm not running the app. <laughs> it would help if I ran it, right? And see if we did our code correctly. So we got this domain here. So let us intercept the request. And we'll put um, totesLegit.com. We send it and we get an access denied. So that would be protecting it with the whitelist approach. There's a lot of ways to do it, but it's something you definitely need to be testing for. And yeah. And before we conclude this video, let's just go over the other recommendations from OpenAI to protect against this, right? We already went over the whitelist approach. And in my opinion, this is gonna be the best way to prevent it. There's also its recommendation of HTTPS, which I guess would protect against man the middles on internal assessments, but this one isn't that relevant. Here, it's talking about using a security library. Um, I guess if your library like Django, Flask, uh, Laravel or something has its own functionality, maybe that's good, but it should be something you still test for. It mentions this OWASP secure header project, which honestly, I don't know that much about. Um, if we go to it, it's talking about just secure headers in general. And I think this is more for like cross-site scripting and other types of protection, right? If we go to like the response headers to add, it talks cache control, clear site data, content security policy. This isn't really referring to host header injection in specific. So I don't know if there's a header you can really use to protect another header. That just seems weird to me. Reverse proxy. This is another good one. This is what's protecting a lot of websites just because of things like Cloudflare. Um, because in general, if the website doesn't know, or the reverse proxy doesn't know where to send the data to because you tampered with the host header, then it doesn't get to the web server to be sent out anyways, right? Um, and the final one, implement domain validation, um, verifying the host header matches the expected domain of the request. This is kind of talking, I think, about using the environment variable that I mentioned before, instead of using, well, I guess it would use both, right? It would be checking the request header matches what the uh, web application thinks it is. So that would be another one to do. Finally, I just want to show what it looks like if you try to tamper with a Cloudflare header, right? So Hack the Box does use Cloudflare. So if I did forgot password, uh, maybe you have to refresh. Here we can do ipsec at hackthebox.eu. If I send this to burp suite, let's go to proxy, intercept on, send request. And oh, first it sends an options and that sends the post. So I'm gonna put this over to the repeater tab. We're going to say the host is ipsec.rocks. And then when I send this, we just get a uh, misdirected request, right? It just doesn't work because it doesn't know where to send the data to. So that's why Cloudflare would protect it. However, if you just depended on Cloudflare, then someone could go to like um, Shodan, Census or something and do searches on your website, maybe searching by like the HTTP title, and if your website is configured to also allow um, the internet to access it directly, they would be able to find it on Shodan and then bypass Cloudflare and do the injection, right? But this video isn't about leaking websites behind Cloudflare, so that's where I'm gonna conclude it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Take care, and I will see you all next time.